Good morning, my beautiful, beautiful IP Resilience family and friends and teammates. I hope you have a blessed day today. I hope everything goes uh, goes your way. And if not, please do not give up on your dreams. Do not give up on your hope. Do not give up on any of your goals that you are about to achieve. So life is still happening uh, and life is still going. So please take advantage of this beautiful gift that we all have uh, live and please uh, use it as an essence and protect it with everything that you you have it's such a blessing to be alive and being awake so today in front of me i have a special person you know an excellent person to speak about the life essence of life of course to give us rekindle hope and of course a little bit of advice about how to we proceed about that we have laura rosica and she's a writer She's a poet. She's a very well-known publisher in the state of Minnesota. And I'm so excited to see her and talk to her right now. She's also mother of nine. She's a public figure and she's such an influencer here in Minnesota, Minneapolis. So hi, Laura. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Today, I don't want to talk to you as a publisher. I don't want to speak to you as a poet. You have well achieved so many heights. You have achieved so many things in your life. Today, I wanted to talk to you as a mother of nine children. Nine children, Laura. Oh, my God. Seven boys and two girls. Yes, this is amazing. So please tell us about your motherhood, about, you know, the maybe the your uh, tough times, you know, the good times as well. And then we will be like getting a little bit in depth, you know, we'll be asking you more questions with regards of uh, all of this, you know, the strengths that you, you know, you, you got. So tell us about, you know, how is being motherhood changed you as a person? Well, um, you know, I think it's very easy when you don't have kids to think that you're going to do everything right and so on and so forth. And you have kids and you find out that just because you do everything the parenting book says doesn't mean that they're going to be perfect little people and you're going to have a perfect family. You know, you learn that each child has a very different personality. So, you know, some of my kids are much more strong-willed. Some of them are much more impetuous, maybe. Some of them are more determined to study and get straight A's, where others want to be doing sports, and you really have to push them. So they're each different, and I think you learn that you have to look at yourself and face your own faults. You have to keep trying to do better. You have to find some balance where how do you get these various multiple personalities to go all in the right direction when they want to go maybe all different directions. So it's it's a challenge, and um, but I think in general, you know, I got some really good kids, and they've all turned out really well. The oldest is 32, and the youngest is 16. And so, you know, I've got a couple in the military. I've got one with a PhD. Um, I've got, they're all hardworking. They all have remained true to their faith. They love God. They like to do charity work. So I'm really happy, you know. I mean, it's, we're never perfect as parents, but they've all ended up in a really good place. That's absolutely amazing, Laura, for your determination. And I know you had like some of the rough time, you know, like um, raising them up. And as a woman, you know, struggled a lot. So what have you learned from children? What lesson did they maybe like uh, uh, shared with you without them even expressing? What, what lessons have they taught me? <laughs> um, you know, my, my, one of my sons inadvertently taught me a lesson that a lot of things really don't matter as much as we think they do. And um, so I had two years in a row where I had a different son in ICU. And I forget which came first, but one of them was one son had, he was four, he had just um, a little, you know, inflammation settled in his throat and it was choking him slowly. And I brought, we finally, a friend pushed me to take him to the emergency room on a Friday. And I said, they're going to laugh at me for bringing my kid in for snoring because that's what was happening. It was causing him to snore and he was four. Mm -hmm. 
and she just she wouldn't let it go and so you know there's a lesson there about faith because she later said i thought myself i was crazy and yet i couldn't stop pushing you and we ended up um with the doctor i think at first they were laughing at me and then all of a sudden he sort of had a seizure in front of them and we ended up racing down the hall beside the gurney signing permission and the doctor later said if you brought him in monday he would have been dead mm -hmm. um it was a minor procedure just to lance and drain that and he was fine but he ended up in icu for three days and then the year before after that another son slid down the stairs hit his head every single step along the way and he ended up lived in uh, bremerton washington at the time next to uh, puget sound where it comes in and a medevac had gone down in puget sound and drowned everyone the week before this happened and all of a sudden i'm being told your son needs to be airlifted over puget sound and you can't go with him and he was strapped to a board and he was terrified um, I had to make an hour-long drive. You know, my husband and I had to make an instant decision who stays with the other kids who drives to the hospital. And it was an hour drive down around the Tacoma Narrows Bridge and back up to Seattle to where the head trauma unit hospital was. And, um, you know, after you go through a couple things like that, you start to think about all the things that you used to get upset about that used to frustrate you the things other people are getting agitated that, I don't know, the store doesn't have the brand of mac and cheese they want or the right color shoes or, you know, a million things that in perspective, they just don't seem important anymore. Mm. Isn't that so true? You know, uh, sometimes like our kids also, they live life without thinking about, you know, like our problems. And even my kids said, mom, I don't want to grow up because you guys have so many problems, bills, taxes, you have to think about insurance, you have to think about so many things. I want to remain a kid. I want to have been my own place where all I have to worry about school, all I have to worry about video games, my friends, my silly friends. And isn't that true? You know, they have things that, you know, you don't have to think about that. The world is still going. The life is still happening. And we have this uh, essence, you know, the life of these little, you know, little babies, like a gift to us that all after everything crushes, that are the only thing that really, truly matters into our lives is the happiness, health and life of our children, of our right. loved ones. And that's the something that no money can buy, no, uh, no insurance or government can promise us or give us any assurance about that so this mm -hmm. is uh, like you said it's a it's a god it's a god's gift that we have to really cherish and and grow our faith into him so laura i wanted to speak to this mother who is uh you know struggling to i don't know like with the children you know especially with nowadays where media is taking over our attention of our children and they're raising quote to quote our kids and brainwashing them uh, you know the way they are I sometimes am afraid to hear what my son has to say about what he reads or learns from school. I'm like, this is not the school I send you to. What yeah. in the world are they doing to you? So how would you speak to that mother who is uh, fighting against the social media and raising her, her kids? Um, you know, we homeschooled some of our older kids, and I think that's one of the best things we ever did. I do wish that I had been able to continue it, but I was I was really not getting any support from anyone in homeschooling. And so most of them eventually did end up going to public school. In fact, all of them did. Um, but they were getting very strong lessons at home. We took them, I took them to church every single Sunday. We talked about our faith. We practiced our faith. So for me, I'm Catholic, you know, we, there was a time when we gathered nightly and we said the rosary and I would talk to them about the different decades and what they mean, you know, that this is, we're supposed to be thinking, for instance, about the birth of Christ and what did it mean that he came in poverty? What did it mean that this happened? So we would really think about the life of Christ as we said the rosary. And so they grew up from a very young age doing that and you know, my then husband and I are both, for better or worse, uh, very political. We, you know, we have some strong opinions. And so we would discuss 
um, not just this is what we believe, but this is why we believe it. You know, we're not making this stuff up out of the blue. Um, you know, ask all the questions you want. Um, we'll tell you why we think what we do, and we'll back it up. And, you know, we encourage you to read and learn. And in the end, I think most of them, amazingly, have pretty much stayed on the same page. You know, they're, they're all living their faith, so... Yes, yeah, so you're pretty much saying that uh, faith foundation is a ba base foundation for 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 them to grow. And of course, if we remove the God from the family, schools, and uh, and let's say government, you know, things will not go the the right way that according to the you know God's will in our lives. So uh, yes, yeah, so you you're absolutely right. We still have to be like persistent about what we are and our or our faith. Right uh, mm -hmm. to set up the values and standards for our children, for for our families as well. When it comes to things, it's not easy. I know it's so easy to drop into the media about the lies, about some of the get get addicted to their news and such. Even the school system as well too. And uh, I strongly believe that if you remove the God from the school, that we, we will come up with this result that we have right now. So and. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and that's why, you know, having the strong faith in our family, that will be a great foundation. So no matter where they are, it will be something that will guide them in their lives, you know, while they're in school, while they're in work, while they're with the company of the key, uh, people that they have, um, you know, ch chose to um, affiliate themselves with. That will be something that they will guide through. So, uh, Laura, we thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, this, I hope you, you know, this message, message is going to go and uh, travel viral because they need to know that they're not alone, that there are people who are also uh, going through the same thing that they are. And if they need to reach out to you, your information will be provided down in the feed so they will connect with you and if they need to publish the book or if they need to talk to you or you know you write the poems too and uh, they'll be able to also uh, come to you and uh, and uh, and settle and handle everything that they need to do so uh, Laura thank you so much for being such an instrumental part of our community for bringing us igniting us and giving us a hope where you you, you put people together bright minds to, for the support for the for the hope for the grace for the love and um and just being with each other so we thank you again and it was ilona from ip resilience do not go anywhere we want you to be healthy happy and blessed until then i will see you next time